Okay, well now we're going to be taking a look at the championship players in with a chance of being named the PFA Virtu Motors Fans Player of the Year. At first on our list, a man you've just been seeing. Uh, he scored 43 goals in 44 appearances. It is, of course, Alexander Mitrovic. Next up, fellow cottager uh, Harry Wilson, Sheffield United's top goal scorer Billy Sharp is also on our list. Then it's Bournemouth's very own Dominic Solanke, Ben Brereton Diaz of Blackburn Rovers and Andreas Weiman of Bristol City. Uh, and alongside myself and Max Whittle, we have a fantastic panel to talk to us all about these wonderful players. Uh, we are joined by Tom from Back of the Net, Sammy from Fulhamish, Ryan from the Second Tier Pod, Graham from 90min.com and Daniel from Rovers Chat. Uh, gents, welcome. Love Lovely to have you all here. But Sammy, I am going to start with you. I'm pretty sure you would have enjoyed seeing uh, those images we've just been watching. I mean, Mitrovic, what a player. Remarkably, he won, well, I say remarkably, deservedly so, won the PFA Fans Player of the Month seven times this season, <laughs> uh, which I think says it all really, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. Uh, it's been a remarkable year, uh, considering that uh, a certain manager didn't play him too much last year. Um, I think it's been an incredible turnaround um, in form for, for Alexander. We knew that he was already pretty good at this level. Uh, he won the Golden Boot two seasons ago, but yeah, he came back this year just with an extra point to prove, which I think was uh, a bit dangerous for the rest of the championship. And... He's just been unplayable. He's not just scored a lot of goals. It's not just meaningless goals at the end of our mm. six, seven game, six, seven goal winning games. You know, he's scored important goals all the way through the season, won us so many points. And the biggest ones sometimes the, the headers in the in the one nil wins away from home, particularly in January, February, March, when things got tough. He dug us out of so many matches this season. Um, he can do it all at his head. Left foot, right foot. He's yeah, he's he's magnificent, and he is my favourite ever Fulham player. And that uh, there is a that is a high bar. There wow. have been some fantastic Fulham players over the years, but I just don't think there's anyone I've quite enjoyed as much as as Mitrovic this season. Well, Graham, you were you were nodding away there, almost as if you were agreeing with that statement of being up there with one of the best Fulham players of all time. But I want to know: is he one of the best Championship players of all time? Certainly, I think you have to regard him as the greatest championship player of all time. What he's done this season is just remarkable. You know, I think on another, another year, Harry Wilson would be walking away, possibly. Well, we don't know who's won it yet, but he's firm favourite. And the performances he's put in week after week, the determination. You know, he's done it for Serbia in the World Cup. We're going to see him in Qatar as well. So it's just a fantastic performance. We've seen some wonderful players in the championship, but no one's held the candle to what Mitro has done this season. And 43 goals in 44 appearances. I'm going to say that one more time because I think you used the word remarkable. It's outstanding. Yeah, I, I was there when he broke Guy Whittingham's all-time. It's a bit dubious what exactly record he broke, <laughs> but he broke the second tier for a long time record, let's put it that way, um, to score the 43rd of the season. And he enjoyed it so much. It was just one of those incredible history-making moments. We've genuinely seen history being broken this year and um, all credit to him. And and the fact that I think he genuinely loves the club and loves where he is, is, is extra special. This isn't a player who's itching for a move elsewhere. He's going to be happy to play for Fulham at least for another year. We'll see what happens after that. And um, I just can't wait for him to prove everything everyone that says, oh, but he can't do it in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Do they I say really, it like that? Exactly <laughs> like that. Exactly like that. The amount of radio shows, TV things I've done where it's like, but can he do it in the Premier League? Yes, he can. He's already scored more goals in a Premier League season than Mikel Antonio has. So, Wow. I'll cross out that next question then. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, Harry Wilson, Fulham as well, 20 assists this season and 10 goals. Can he cut it in the Premier League? <laughs> well... <laughs> Harry Wilson's one of those players who I think when he's at championship level, he is astonishingly talented. And when it comes to the Premier League, he's with a bunch of other players who are also astonishingly talented. But this season, he's taken his game up to another, another level. This season, he's got 19 assists and the most off the top of my head assists in the championship season is 21. So to think of it that way, that he's had this remarkable season. And as you were saying, 
if it wasn't for a striker getting 43 goals, then he probably would have walked off with player of the season. But what a season he's had. I don't think Mitrovic would have got close to 43 goals if it wasn't for Harry Wilson doing what he's doing. He's had a, a, an astonishing season in itself. How would you describe Wilson to, to someone who hasn't seen him play before? He's a bit one-footed. I think Sammy will accept that. His left foot is just one of the best I've ever seen at championship level, but what a left foot it is. He can still get better in terms of his physicality, in terms of his pace and his directness, but if you ask him to hit something from 30 yards out, I don't think there's anyone better at championship level at testing the goalkeeping that far. But his passing ability as well, his crossing, he's a marvellous player to watch. I want to ask Sammy the question. <laughs> I really do. But that was your first league title in 21 years. So yeah. for the Premier League now, what's the expectation? Honestly, look, well, Mitrovic is one thing. Whether Fulham can stay up, I'm not. And I'm not going to be quite so bullshy over. Um, I, I've been burnt before. <laughs> uh, t uh, three seasons ago when we went up the first time, I was quite confident. I wasn't so confident on Hunter Parker, to be honest, because it was such difficult circumstances. I do think that this is our best shot of staying up. You look at the spine of the squads, you know, Tosin, who hasn't made this list, also had an amazing season at centre-back. is fantastic. You've then got players like Harry Wilson, Mitrovic, um, in there. Harrison Reed is a fantastic player in the middle of the pitch. There's so many good players across this Fulham squad. So I do think that our spine of the squad is good. We will spend this summer, which is obviously what you need to be able to do to stay in the Premier League. So all the boxes are ticked that Fulham can stay up. But look, we've had, we've had three relegations in a row from the Premier League. So it's uh, it takes its toll after a while. I'm not going to come on here and... Um, be on cursed football this time next year when we're <laughs> when we're back in the second tier and everyone's laughing at us again. Daniel, should we talk uh, Blackburn? Um, I think it's fair to say they faded out a little bit towards the end of the season, which meant, you know, you did miss out on that playoff place. Is it fair to say that uh, Brereton Diaz's injury was almost the catalyst for that loss in momentum initially? Yeah, I agree. I think you look at Rovers this year and we were free scoring really. Uh, after we got beat 7-0 off Fulham, we 12 games, I think we went unbeaten. We were scoring goals for fun. Brereton was scoring and then you kind of take him out the side and you lose that. He changed a game in a moment and we missed that game changer at the time. And, you know, that's when the decline comes. And like you say, we fall from second to eighth in a couple of months. So I think Brereton's a massive player in this team. And I think if he's in, we'd be discussing a playoff game, you know, coming up rather than discussing an eighth place finish. Mowbray gone now, uh, so looking ahead to next season, can they get stronger? It's a tough one. I think we've no idea who's coming in. There's no suggestion on names. There's only the betting markets, but we know they're influenced a lot by what people back. So we've got the spine of the team. A bit like Sammy was saying, we've got that spine that we've got uh, Lewis Travis, John Buckley, players that maybe they're not as big name as some other clubs that are staying in this division, but you know the quality players at this level and. If we can get the right manager in, who knows, we might just shock a few people and be up there again next year. <laughs> that game against Forest mm. just exemplified how, how fascinating the championship is, right? Yeah, it was, it was a cracking game. I mean, we were really nervous going into it. We all know the, the form Forest had and we were consistently inconsistent at the end of the season. I think every neutral wanted Forest really to, to win that game because of the run they've been on, which I appreciate. But when it matters... We, we've got the job done this season and I think we've got the best record in the top six against each other. I think we've got, we've, we lost one game to Luton. Apart from that, we've got a really good record against the top six and um, in one-off games, um, I was chatting to Sammy before and in one-off games, Scott Parker's very good at just getting the job done and that's what he did and I thought on the night, Forrest probably underwhelmed on the night. I, I, they surprised me. I thought they'd really come at us and it'd be really hairy and I, I would have taken a point and uh, said, you know, leave it to the Millwall game and I fancy us but on the night, I think we deserve to win the game. A um, few, few decent saves from Travers and we just waited for our moment and the January transfer window and a few signings like Kiefer Moore ended up getting the job done for us. So we're delighted because we could just chill on the last day, which was a nice relief. For us. Have you guys chatted about Mr. Parker? What, what's, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's the chat been? I mean, I've just told him he's, he's got promoted again like he did for you. So. I don't hate Scott Parker. Look, he left Fulham in slightly acrimonious circumstances. Um I, I didn't enjoy the way that he 
wanted to pay out from Fulham, but wanted a nice signing on bonus from Bournemouth. I was like, you can have one, but not both, mate. Um, have what you want. <laughs> <laughs> but I, as, as he said, I wasn't massively surprised with that game against Forest. I thought Bournemouth would win it because in tight one-off games, Scott Parker can produce tactical... I think masterclasses is a bit strong, but like he can he can nullify opponents. It's exactly what he did to Forrest. And um, just like in the big game that he won for us against Brentford, it was a free kick free kick routine that uh, that won them the game. And it was exactly the same for for Bournemouth. So he's he's got history. And uh, look, good luck to them next season. And, and you know, I I don't think it's a shoe in that Bournemouth will go down either, like a, a lot of people think. Let's talk more about Parker and the job he has done at Bournemouth because he's done fantastically well. I mean, I was watching uh, his halftime team talk on YouTube and it genuinely gave me <laughs> hairs standing up on the back of my neck, you know, in the promotion decider. Um, that must have been pretty special for you to witness. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mad how a little thing like that can, can change a lot of people's perceptions. I think a lot of Bournemouth fans throughout the season have been not too sure. Um, we've got a an unbelievable squad of players. Um, you know, them last couple of games where we had to get it done, people like Todd Campwell don't make the squad, Gary Cale doesn't make the squad. So we knew the armoury he had and we felt we we maybe should have been, I mean, we ended up only finishing a couple of points off Fulham, but, you know, they scored over 30 goals more than us and and we felt we played with a handbrake on a little bit. But you see a video like that and you see how he's brought the team together, a team that in the last couple of seasons have have not looked like a team and have looked like since Eddie Howe, we don't know where to turn now. So that was really nice to see that he's brought them together and they're certainly playing for him. And and like we just mentioned then, in one-off games, in big games when it mattered, we got the job done and his remit was to get Bournemouth straight back into the Premier League and that's what he's done. Um, and we were all taken out at the start of the season. But um, yeah, there's there's certain, there's certain questions to his style of play. But does that mean we're maybe more suited to a Fulham, for example, for the Premier League? Maybe, maybe, because I feel, you know, Fulham in particular will probably have to adapt a lot. They're not going to be able to just go at teams and Mitch Fitz ain't going to score 40 odd goals. Well, um, <laughs> I'll put a wager. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, yeah, the way we play, maybe it was with a long term thinking of if we were to get, get up to the Premier League, then we're going to have to play this way because we're not going to have a lot of the ball. Yeah, most definitely. And as you say, he has done a wonderful job and the players are clearly responding to him. One of them being uh, Solanke. I mean, his confidence just seems to have reached new heights. Yeah, he's, he's been brilliant. I, I feel for him because if it weren't for Mitrovic, I think you'd probably be getting in a lot more discussions. But, you know, what Mitrovic has done has been outrageous. But yeah, Dom, Dom's always been a player I've, I've rated. And I think, you know, you're not a Chelsea or Liverpool if you're not a good footballer. And he scored goals at a young level for England. But I never saw him as a goal scorer, really. And this season, I mean, I wouldn't have to look at too many kind of heat maps of... He's basically a false nine. I mean, he doesn't... He's not doing what Mitrovic does, for example, um, and poaching a little bit more. He, he has to do so much. And he's one of the few players that's played every single game, started every single game for us this season. And he's so crucial to the way we play. Um, he's, he's playing with the front men around him. Christie's been good, but he's come from Scotland, never played in England before. Jane Nantley, first ever season as a professional. Um, and he's, he's taken on that responsibility. And it's probably the first time he's had to do that. He come in, he was second fiddle to Callum Wilson. And then we had Dan Juma last season. And this season, it's been, you're a man and you've got, to, you've got to do the business. And he's done that. And I'm, I'm delighted for him because there's a lot of question marks whether he was ever going to be a 20, 20 goal a season striker. And he's nearly locked the door for 30, 29 in the league. So absolutely chuffed for him. And he's been, he's been brilliant for us. Well, from one goal scorer to another, we have to talk about Billy Sharp, Ryan. 36-year-old Billy Sharp. His third spell at Bramall Lane now. He now has over 100 career goals for the club. Just keeps doing it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone who scores goals as consist consistently as Billy Sharp has done for someone of his age. And I don't want that to sound disrespectful because he is getting on a bit. I think he can accept that. But at the same time, scoring as, as being an, an important a player as he has been is ridiculous. You look at Sheffield United's squad. They've got two strikers in there that combined cost 50 million quid. You'd have thought they'd be relying on them this season. But no, they're still relying on... Billy Sharp, at his age, being their most important player. And you only have to look at them recently. They've struggled when he's been out injured. But since he's, when he been, has been in the side, he's been so important, whether it's scoring goals, whether it's been the player who you bounce the ball off to create stuff going forwards. He's just brilliant. I, I love the guy so much. And if it wasn't for Mitrovic, who's kind of creating the debate around the best championship striker ever, a bit more complicated now. He would be the best championship striker ever just because of the consistency that he's shown over the 28-year career that he's had. <laughs>
Yeah, it's worth going and looking at that West Brom goal he scored. I think 25 or so passes before that. But he is injured at the moment, as you mentioned, Ryan. So, Graham, if he does miss the playoffs, how crucial is that? It is. It'll be a massive miss, you know. I think Ollie McBurney's already out, you know. They have got a fantastic squad, Chef Knight, but it is being stretched, you know. We actually saw a video earlier today of a man who may have a chance, Daniel Jefferson, who was in the League One conversation. That's how good Chef Knight is. They've got this guy who can come off the bench well. But I think it's important for Billy to be there for Chef Knight because he is, you know, he's a talisman figure. He's that, you know, captain figure. Even if he wasn't captain, he'd be there doing that captain's job. And and for me, that's why I personally I make Chef Knight first of all because of Billy Sharp and his influence. And and everyone says nobody's really got that umph coming into playoffs, but I think Chef Knight have. I think Billy Sharp is a huge part of that. What's he like as a, a captain, just from watching? Yeah, you can see it, and it's to be a, a captain up front to garner that respect from your teammates. You have to be something special because we don't see strikers very often. But you know, the players know what's coming. He plays that role. He commands that authority even as a striker. And even at Bramble Lane, when he's on that pitch, I've been there before as, as, a visiting, as a visiting fan, and it's, oh, no, he's on the pitch. You always think there's something coming, and inevitably it normally does. Mm. And he's Mr Sheffield United, which I think is the most important yeah. thing. And it won't surprise me if there is a statue of him in 10 years' time outside Bramble Lane. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Um, you use the word consistency to describe him. I think another player it's fair to call consistent is uh, Andreas Weiman. Uh here he is on the screen. I mean, he just seems to be producing time and time again. Does he ever have an off day, Daniel? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I think he's one that's creeped up into the conversation a bit more in terms of his goals. Like we've mentioned Solanke, Brereton, Diaz, Mitrovic, and 20 goals, I think, for a Bristol City side that mm. have been really poor this year is nothing short of incredible, I think. He will have his off days because he's not got the... He maybe don't have them people around him to pick him up as much as, you know, these bigger and better clubs in the league. But 20 goals for a 17th, 16th place side, I think it's nothing short of incredible. Yeah, how imperative has he been for this Bristol City side this season, Sammy? Yeah, I mean, both times that he's played uh, against Fulham, um, he's he's been a handful. He's been one of those players that's kind of been around championship level for a long time. Um, to bring it back to a, a Fulham um perspective sorry a Fulham uh, reference I, I remember when Fulham were a bit rubbish but Ross McCormack scored lots of goals for us at that level and he kept us in the league and probably this season for, for Bristol City that's what um, he's managed to do as, as well they've got, obviously got a few talented players Bristol City they picked up towards the end of the season I wouldn't be surprised to see them um, a little bit higher up the league this year it's been a, a tough year um, for them but yeah he's always someone that you've known when you're playing Bristol City that he's going to be a danger man it's uh yeah impressive to see him get um, that many goals I think it's kind of crept up on on everyone I think it's good to make the point that he doesn't always play centre forward either mm. I think when we played him at home he played right wing back like he's so versatile as well you know the goals he's scoring for a team as we've all said that are not performing at the top end of the table and he's not even leading the line all the time I think it's incredible and he's he's been around the block and I didn't I didn't realise that he still had this in him to be honest so mm. uh, yeah really impressive the thing is He's 31, and his highest goal-scoring tally before this season is 10. So where has this season come from where he scored 22 goals and got 10 assists as well? It's just, where has this guy been this whole time? And you look at his goal conversion rate as well. Before this season, I'd have thought he's a pretty wasteful player. But you only have to look at the stats to know that he's been extremely clinical in front of goal. And where it's come from, I have no idea. But hopefully he does it again next season because Bristol City will need to because I'm, I'm not sure what to make of them headed into next season. As a Villa fan, I can tell you he was always this good in the reserves. <laughs> always 20 goals a season. Um, you look at the likes of Jed Spence, Brennan Johnson. The, is, has this been like a real vintage season for the championship? I'll go all the way to the top, Sam. Yeah, it has because Bournemouth got promoted. So I'm well happy. You can call it vintage <laughs> if you want. Um, no, Young there's, there's been a lot of top players, isn't there? I mean... You look at the conversation there with uh, them six players and you're thinking of players that have missed out. Like you mentioned, Jed Spence has been incredible. Um, Borough fan over there, I'm not sure <laughs> why he's not with you guys. Um, yeah, and Brennan Johnson as well. How Forrest haven't got a player in there. Huddersfield have finished third. They haven't got a player in, in the conversation either. I think that shows the, the quality and the standard and Forrest in particular and Brennan Johnson in particular. If they don't get over the line in the playoffs, I think a few teams will be sniffing around them. So yeah, he's probably been one that's been a real star, hasn't he? Uh, well, listen, we've shined a spotlight on these six fantastic players. But, uh, Graham, it'd be interesting to come to you and hear your thoughts on uh, some potential players we should keep an eye on for next season. 
Yeah, we're just talking about the players who've come through the season and we can list so many. There's a Keen Lewis Potter at Hull, Isaiah Jones at my own Middlesbrough, uh, John Swift at Reading. There's so many players and I totally agree it's been a vintage year. It's who, who is going to stay put? You know, we've got so many. Josh Bowler at Blackpool again. It, it's just all about recruitment. So, yeah, I think there's some really good players and we really do have to look at the teams coming down as well because Norwich who are coming down mm. and Watford, a lot of these players will stay put so we're getting some really really top players coming down. But yeah, for me, the likes, I'm biased. I say Isaiah Jones. I say, why Jed Spencer's in Middlesbrough? In two words, Isaiah Jones. That's why. <laughs> Jed, that's how good Isaiah Jones is. But yeah, some like Josh Bowler, Keen Lewis Potter. For me, some fashionable clubs. And I would say um, one guy who's very unlucky not to be in the six is Lewis O'Brien at Huddersfield. What a fantastic player he's been. But again, it's whether these, clubs, whether these players can stay in the championship because they're going to be very tempting to a lot of clubs, but yeah, so I'd say Lewis O'Brien as well is one to watch if he doesn't manage to take Huddersfield up, which he might. Ryan, uh, who do you think is going to take it to the next level, next campaign? The Championship is getting better and better in terms of the players who are definitely going to be Premier League quality at some point. You, you look at some of the players we've got on here, unbelievably talented, but we were just talking before about the players who have missed out. Some of them will play for England, and then even then, I think... We haven't even talked about the likes of Morgan Gibbs-White, Levi Colwell, James Garner, players that I honestly think will play for England at some point or at least be involved in the England setup. I think if you're talking about players who are definitely going to be, I say definitely going to be in the Championship because he's going to get interest next season anyway, but <laughs> players who could be in the Championship next season, I think Keen Lewis Potter's the one for me who I think is just such an astonishingly talented player. And he's playing for Hull, but you could go through all the other, time, all the other teams who are definitely going to be in the Championship next season and you could pick a player from each of those sides and make a decent argument for one of those players playing in the Premier League consistently in a few years' time. So I think King Lewis Potter's the one for me who stands out. You looked at what Jared Bowen's done this season for West Ham. I can see him following a similar path because came through at Hull, similar kind of player. Bowen's going to be in the England setup near enough soon, and I think Lewis Potter's going down a similar path. Yeah, well, Daniel, before uh, Max sees us out and says goodbye, we'll give you the final word. Any other players you want to throw into the mix? I think if we're going off a personal note, I think you look at Blackman and John Buckley, I think, is one that everyone needs to keep an eye on. Really talented midfielder. He's one that will probably, like I said before, because he's not at one of these bigger clubs, he might go under the radar, but he's such a talent. And like Ryan says, the Championship's so talented. Every year it kind of gets that. These more players that you can see going on and doing something and I think it's going to be a really good season next year, especially with the teams coming down. Do we say roll on next season then already? Yeah, I'm ready for it. Roll that? on next season. Roll on next season. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear I think, the fact. I I'm keep so thinking you've got headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit uh, rowdy in here. It's but, rowdy. Um, yeah, I can't wait for next season. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Pleasure. Cheers. And remember, you can vote for your PFA Virtu Motors Fans Player of the Year right now for the championship on 90min.com. <laughs>